Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be like a first impression review kind of video, more of a first impression, but it's one of the spoke fragrance, a personal fragrance, my 1000th bottle and it is Menoir and Fleur. This is from uh, La Via del Profumo. Dominique Dubrana's fantastic custom perfume bespoke service. I love this, this is my second one, and I am so excited. So I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys and kind of talk about the service and share my 1000th bottle because I thought it would be fun to share on this channel and talk about this scent because I spent hours choosing notes and I'm so excited to share my thoughts with you guys. So. Let's get into the video. First things first, this is my second bottle. And if you're wondering, I still don't know why I named it Minwa and Fleur, because I don't speak French. I can't pronounce French. Midnight in Bloom is what this translates to, but obviously I named it something French. Now, the first bottle I purchased, I purchased both of these, by the way. These were not, these were not given, these were purchases, was Rue Mysore. Now the service starts at 250 euros and you choose seven ingredients, and they do have a variety of rare um, ingredients for an upcharge for, you know, for more money. So there's, uh, I think that there's um, ambergris, there's orris, there's vanilla, there's actual Mysore, like that's this one. Uh, Mysore was like an extra, I think 200, or 150 or 200 uh, euros. I ended up spending close to $600 on this bottle of perfume. So to let you know, these aren't cheap, but well worth it. Dominique de Brana is one of the best natural perfumers in my personal opinion. And I, I love what I've tried from the house and from his creations. So when I got this one, or when I wanted to do this one, the 1000th bottle, I wanted to do a a night blooming jasmine fragrance, but I wanted to do it in a way that was something that I wanted to see. I love seeing it everywhere. I do. And there's so many gorgeous ones, but I wanted to focus on like woods and vanilla and jasmine where I'm going to get into the notes. So this cost me with the vanilla because I did upgrade to the vanilla. Vanilla is one of the notes. Uh, $400. Now I have sprayed this on my skin. I did just get this today. I've been wearing it for about an hour or two. So I'm going to let you guys know how it smells. It does kind of develop linearly. And I've noticed that these fragrances pretty much smell the same. And since this isn't something that can be sold, I'm not too worried about telling you about longevity. I am more telling you about this experience because I like to share my love of scent on this channel. And this is something that I'm really excited for. So this is kind of, this video is more for me. But I also love showcasing these types of services because anyone can do this. This is available to everybody. I will link it below. No affiliate links uh, if I link any of his, his websites below. None of those are affiliates. <laughs> Just I love the service and a lot of people ask me about bespoke fragrances. So the, the notes that I chose, and I spent quite literally hours, I probably spent like a solid day, like morning to evening, <laughs> had lunch, a few cups of coffee, a few cups of tea, and decided on the notes and I wanted to focus on jasmine so the jasmine I chose was most definitely jasmine sambuck if we're talking about midnight and bloom because obviously it's the night blooming jasmine but it also has to do with how it smells and my opinion and my opinion now as I'm sharing my opinion on this I am not trained I don't have any education I'm just whatever I know is based off of the little tiny organ I have and smelling fragrances and trying to train train myself and do as much research as I can. But that doesn't mean I know anything. So whatever I'm saying in regards to moving forward with this, please understand that I don't know anything. But in my opinion, Jasmine Grandiflora is more of a creamier Jasmine. It's lighter, it's softer, it's rounder. It's more what she would consider a feminine floral. It's not that uh, florals are m masculine or feminine, or men or women can wear them. But when you think about the composition that's marketed on the men's fragrance aisle, and you think about the composition that's marketed on the women's fragrance aisle, the way that Jasmine Grandiflora smells, in my opinion, leans creamier, more youthful, 
and something more feminine. It's softer, it's sweeter, it's almost more tropical. What I like about Jasmine Sambach is it's deeper, it's more mysterious, it's more muskier, it's more animalic. And it's not that it's dirtier and it's not that it's an animalic note, but it's like it's deeper and it's more of a shared floral. And when I'm thinking about creating kind of a mysterious, sexy, nighttime jasmine scent, in my opinion, not just because it's the nighttime jasmine, but the way that the nuances in that specific uh, note ingredient, it just fits with what I'm looking for. So the focus on this fragrance, um, out of all the notes, I wanted to be the jasmine, the vanilla, and the cocoa. So obviously I upgraded to the vanilla. I had cocoa, I have bergamot in the opening. I have two woods. So I have Australian sandalwood from, you know, Australian album. I'll get into that. I have Gaiakwe, I'll get into that. I have Opapanox, definitely get into that. But I wanted the focus to be on the cocoa, the jasmine, and the vanilla. Now, I don't want this to be a vanilla fragrance. I don't, I didn't really want this to be too much of a creamy fragrance. I did want a bit of soft round creaminess, but I didn't want it to be super duper creamy. I almost wanted it to maybe mimic a little bit of a lactonic skim milkiness, but I didn't want it to be like frosting. And with the cocoa, I wanted it to be more of like a dark chocolate bitterness, more of a dustiness. Now, the bergamot, I just figured, in my opinion, that out of all of the opening notes, the bergamot would clash less with what I wanted. It was more sparkly, but it doesn't have a lot of the specific smells of like a lemon or a mandarin or a tangerine or a grapefruit that, in my opinion, might clash with everything else because it's all about the base. The base is what I wanted to elevate the jasmine, the vanilla, and the cocoa. And again, these are me choosing these notes and my expectations. That doesn't mean that when he creates the fragrance, he's going to create it to my expectations. He might decide that he has a better vision or the fragrance wants to be its own thing. That's how things work. And I understand that as an artist, you have a painting and you're like, this is how you're going to go. And it's like, nope, I'm going to be my own painting. And you're just like, this is just how you're going to be today. And that's how it works. And even when I was talking and I was filling out, cause you fill out like your favorite notes and the other fragrances that you like from their collection and kind of what you're expecting. He wrote me back and he's like, I think that what you're expecting might not be what these notes can give you, but I can make something beautiful. And I'm like, I love what you created before and I'm perfectly happy embracing whatever this fragrance wants to be. So, the notes that I wanted to add the complexity uh, on top of the vanilla, the cocoa, and the jasmine were first and foremost, the distinctive, specific, specific, because I spent a long time on the sandalwood, the um, Sandalwood Australian album. Now, obviously I don't know too much about the history of sandalwood. I am doing more research. I wanna do a video on it but I do know that true Mysore sandalwood is a very protected, very expensive. Obviously when I upgraded, I kind of felt a little guilty even buying it, but I do know that how it smells is ridiculously gorgeous. And I know sandalwood is something that is beautiful and very grounding. So for me, I initially thought I wanted to upgrade to the, the sandalwood. I considered it, but then I thought that the way that the Mysore sandalwood smells might actually take away from what I want, might make it too rich and too indulgent and too creamy. Believe it or not, who would have thunk? So when I was thinking about what sandalwood to choose, I thought that the, the sandalwood album, the Australian album, would actually be the best. It has some of the distinct nuances and beauty of Mysore Sandalwood, but it has like a drier, I almost want to say texture to it. It's a little bit more aromatic. It's more, I want to say slightly dirtier, if that makes sense. I love the way that it smells. It's less the type of sandalwood that acts as a mayonnaise and fragrances that blends everything together, and more the type of sandalwood that stands out in a fragrance and kind of 
is very distinctive in front and center, and that's what I wanted. Now, I also wanted a wood that was going to play nice with the jasmine, but also pair perfectly with the sandalwood, and I ultimately decided on Gaiac wood. And the reason why I decided Gaiac wood is it has this nuance. This obviously it's wood, it's a little bit drier, slightly darker, a little bit darker. It's very hard wood, very little darker. And what I like about it is it's nuance in the background and just a little bit is smoky, a little bit smoky, just a tiny bit smoky. It's aromatic vibe is a little bit smoky. It doesn't smell smoke, but that adds a nice depth to everything else. So those woods I knew were going to play nice together. And also Gaiac wood just works really beautifully with florals and really gorgeously with jasmine. I just know that from experience with other fragrances. So I knew the bergamot was going to be nice. That's just a given. I knew that the vanilla and the cocoa, no matter how they went, if they were more dry and more earthy, and the vanilla was more potty and animalic and less sweet, it was going to smell good. Or if it was more creamy and lactonic and the chocolate was uh, a little bit more gourmand and less earthy, dry and aromatic and dusty, it would still smell good. I knew at that point, those notes, whatever it was, it would be more gourmand or more aromatic floral. Either way, those this is gonna smell good. But the big kicker for me, the big decision, the one that I spent forever on was the Opopanox. And I know, I'm, I know I'm saying that wrong. And you're gonna think to yourself, what the heck? Why do you care about this one little note? Well, there are, in my opinion, there has to be a foundation for a fragrance. So you have the opening. An opening is so, so obviously you have your, your top notes, your heart notes and your base notes. That's just like the pyramid, but there's the composition of a fragrance too. So like when you're say making a soup, when you're making, you know, when you're cooking something, when you're adding textures and flavors and you're layering flavors, there are times where you add things that you don't really taste, but if they're not there, it's like, what the heck? And so for me, this is gonna sound crazy. For me, I'm, I was looking for the mirepoix of this fragrance, <laughs> of this fragrance uh, formula. And I was like, what do I want to be the mirepoix? What do I want? Do I want it to be the Trinity? Do I want to make something a little bit more soul foody? Or do I want it to be standard French cuisine? Do I want a mirepoix? And with a mirepoix, do you want to be lazy and just rough chop it? Or do you want to chop everything evenly and small with more surface area so that you get more flavor? You know, there's a lot that goes into a mirepoix. A mirepoix is very important. Mise en place is very important. And I spent forever on this mise en place for this fragrance. And so I ultimately decided on what I wanted my mirepoix to be was opopanox. The reason why is whenever I smell a fragrance that has a, a distinctive opopanox note. And because I'm choosing seven ingredients, because this is natural perfumery, because I have an understanding of how his fragrances smell and perform, I have a little bit of experience and understanding of what I'm going to at least expect in regards to kind of levels of, I'm going to be able to at least pick up a bit of opopanox. It's not going to be lost. It's not like sometimes where you read notes and notes and notes and notes and notes in a fragrance and you can't smell any of it, but you know that they're there and they're kind of doing their job. I knew that with this specific, whatever I chose at the base was going to be something that had to kind of be the mayonnaise because I didn't want the sandalwood to be the mayonnaise. It was going to have to be the mayonnaise of everything, but I didn't want it to be just kind of like a cheap mayonnaise. I wanted it to be very expensive, um, flavorful and artisan aioli. It needed to be something that had it had to have some aromatic qualities to it. It had to have layers. It had to work well with everything else. And it had to have set the tone and vibe for what I wanted for this fragrance. So I looked at what I was expecting from this scent. Now, when I look at fragrances that are kind of very sexy, 
beautiful near perfect um, midnight jasmine scents or like like sexy jasmine fragrances. Pearlescent Parfums has done a gorgeous fragrance with their midnight jasmine. I love that. I'm not looking to recreate any of the night blooming jasmine. I'm not looking to recreate oud jasmine from Royal Crown. I'm not looking to recreate a midnight jasmine from Pearlescent Parfums. I was not looking to recreate uh, Lust from Gorilla Perfumes, which is literally just cinnamon and jasmine. I was looking to create something that was more animalic, less gourmand, more earthy and resinous. And for me, opopinox seemed like the best ingredient. So the jasmine sambac can, can have slight nuances and be kind of dirtier, kind of drier, kind of um, animalic. And I love it when jasmines do that. And oh, Papanox is a gum resin. And it can, it's one of those things, it, it smells on its own. It kind of smells incense -y. It kind of smells vanillic. It smells like myrrh and frankincense and, you know, obviously resinous and a little bit balsamic. It smells a variety of different ways. On its own, it could really be its own thing. It's really quite fantastic. But when it is utilized in a fragrance, it just changes a scent and in this scent what it does and what i've noticed because i've been wearing it like i said for a few hours is it takes and it adds a spiciness like an incensey resinous spiciness that has this kind of really interesting slight animalic base and it's so interesting and i love it so what I've been enjoying the past few hours of wearing uh, Minois and Fleur, first and foremost, is that this is a jasmine fragrance and that is what I wanted. Obviously the name, I wanted this to be a jasmine fragrance. If you know me, you know I love jasmine. It's one of my favorite florals. I have my fav one of my top five favorite fragrances is Oud Jasmine, it's right there. Uh, no, there it is, from Royal Crown. I'm not looking to recreate that. And again, if I'm looking for a fantastic, gorgeous, spicy jasmine, I don't, Midnight Jasmine from Pearlescent Parfums is gorgeous. I love the apple in there. I think it's just stunning. But what I wanted to do is I wanted something that was more grounding, was uh, a little bit more, I don't wanna say spiritual, but when I look to natural perfumery, when I look to special bespoke fragrances, I look for what do I want to see out of a fragrance? And what I wanted to see was a little bit more of a different edge. So the first way I wanted this fragrance to go was it to mimic a smoked tea. That's what I wanted. And so when I reached out and I talked to him, or you know, through the, you know, the questionnaire and like emailing back and forth, I wanted it to be kind of like reminiscent of a smoked tea tea but that you're drinking it kind of outside and there's jasmine it's cold and there's you know there's sugar and cream in your tea but there's no tea in this fragrance and there's no I didn't want anything lactonic but I wanted things to mimic um, lactonic notes I wanted the cocoa and the vanilla to mimic something that might seem slightly lactonic like skim milky but I didn't want it to be super creamy. I didn't want it to smell like frosting. And that's when he was saying like, that's not what this fragrance is going to be. And I was totally fine with that because when I was choosing the notes, I knew that what I want this fragrance to be, it's probably not how it's going to be, but I always like to kind of put my, my wishes out into the world and see what the world gives back. But I do know that when I was choosing these notes, I wanted to make sure that the jasmine was first and foremost front and center and that the vanilla and the cocoa played the part correctly. And they do in this fragrance. And what I've been enjoying is that you can smell the cocoa. The cocoa in here is not, I would say, a gourmand note. This isn't a gourmand fragrance. So I know everyone's like, gourmand, gourmand, gourmand. There's a gourmand note in here. There's vanilla in like just about everything. That doesn't mean that anything is a gourmand fragrance. Sometimes things are added for 
more of a texture and a clarity than for it to be creamy and indolic and you know things like that or like tonic or like I said to turn the fragrance from something that's spicy to something that's delicious and delectable and edible this isn't an edible fragrance but what I like is that the cocoa works with the vanilla and what that does is it creates this nice kind of mysterious blanket with the jasmine and that gives the jasmine more than just like a jasmine and I like that because when I smell really beautiful woody jasmine fragrances especially ones that are focusing on the nighttime element there's something about the composition that makes them different and unique and what I wanted was something that was a little bit dry and dusty, but not ozonic or minerally, but still something that was earthy, but not dirty. And I figured that cocoa would be that beautiful note, but if I could get like a beautiful smoked tea fragrance, that would be amazing too. But I didn't pick out the notes expecting that, hoping for it if it was a possibility, <laughs> absolutely. So what the Opapanox does, is you know like when you have those special mayonnaises, those, those special mayonnaises, it's like a slightly spicy animalic mayonnaise, and that's what I like. This adds an animalic resinous, just core to this fragrance that clings to the jasmine sambac. And what that does is it makes the jasmine itself smell spicy. It doesn't make it smell like there's added cinnamon there's added saffron, there's added pepper, there's added aromatics. It in and of itself kind of blends and smooths on top of the jasmine and makes the jasmine itself smell like a spicy flower. And that is exactly what I was hoping for. And that's what I want out of a foundation of a fragrance, of a mirepoix in a scent, is I want something that doesn't quite feel like it is in addition, it elevates, it works to help a, a note be better. And that's what the Opapanox does. What it also does is it doesn't contrast with the distinctive nuances of the Sandalwood Australia album, because though it, that's, that smells different than the other sandalwoods, especially when you're talking about natural ingredients, you can really smell the difference. And I'm not sitting here saying that I am trained enough to be able to blind smell and tell you if I was smelling five different things in a row. I am not. But if I'm sitting here and I, I can smell the difference between like a Mysore and an Australian. And I know also that when I've smelled other sandalwoods, you know, from other types of trees, that I've smelled a bit of a difference. And if I'm going to be spending the money, I want to pick the one that I think is going to be the best mesh. And so I like the idea of the Australian album. That doesn't mean that the other one wouldn't have worked beautifully, but with the Gaiac and with everything else, I figured that would have been the best because that's gonna have kind of, in my opinion, the best of both worlds. And everything just came together beautifully and it's really gorgeous. So it is a very gorgeous, animalic, slightly balsamic core, not core base, but it opens up with this kind of beautiful blast of jasmine and vanilla and slight kind of spicy chocolate, but it's that's just a nuance, which is exactly what I wanted. But you get these beautiful woods. The woods are very distinctive and very present. And it just smells kind of like you're walking through uh, woods and there's jasmine everywhere and it's nighttime and it's warm and it's like twilight and everything's blooming and it's warm but it's not hot and it's idealistic and it's mysterious and it's alluring and it's enticing and it's sexy and it's different and I like that. So I love the fact that this smells like what I always hoped it would be but better I love that I think I did a good job picking out the uh, picking out the notes and I especially love that I know that uh, Dominique Debrana did all the work to make this amazing because it really wouldn't have mattered what I picked out. I know that he would have been able to create something beautiful.
because like I said, anything, everything I smelled from him has just been absolutely gorgeous. But I like to at least think that the little bit of effort I took in choosing the notes made his job a little bit easier. But um, at the end of the day, even if I made it harder for him, this is a gorgeous fragrance and definitely smells like a fragrance, in my opinion, worth $400. There is, you can smell the distinction in all the notes. You can smell the nuances in the florals to the woods, to the, the beautiful mirepoix, the opapanox in here. And opapanox, again, is something, I love that gummy resin so much. <laughs> it needs to be more front and center in fragrances. It's so fantastic. And uh, this smells like a gorgeous night blooming uh, floral fragrance. And I still don't know why I named it Minois and Fleur, but I did. And I am definitely super happy. And this is my 1000th bottle. So that is my, my little review, first impression kind of discussion of this fragrance from Dominique de Brana. Now, as always, I will link below. You guys can most definitely commission your own bespoke fragrance. If you are looking to commission a fragrance, if that is something that has been on your bucket list, if you've wanted to um, have your own signature fragrance, your own custom perfume that only you own, this is a great service. But I will say that this is natural perfumery, so do understand the pros and cons and price point of natural perfumery. And also do understand that, you know, like he said to me, and I think if I'm going to paraphrase because it's been a few weeks, is that the perfume and formulas are like kids. You can raise them a certain way, but they're going to grow up and do whatever they want on their own. So you can sit here and you can say, I'm going to choose all these notes and I want it to be this. But that doesn't mean that ultimately that's what the fragrance is going to want to be. There is going to be some level of wiggle room and you know, margin of discrepancy in regards to what you might expect and what you might get. And even though I had chosen these fragrances and I told myself it could go one of five ways and when I kind of described what I would idealistically like if it were possible, that doesn't mean that I didn't effectively choose fragrances that are notes that would ultimately lead to something like this. And at the end of the day, it's absolutely gorgeous and I love it. The same thing with Rue Mysore. When I chose the notes for Rue Mysore, I had a basic idea of what to expect based on my knowledge of how fragrances or notes smell. And when I do the next one, which would be very, very pricey, I will probably spend way longer choosing what goes with that because I have very real. Um, um, not that I will have expectations because like I said, when you do this, you're, you're going to get whatever you get. That doesn't mean that you don't talk and, you know, exchange emails and tell, you know, reach out and say, this is what I would hope for. This is what I'd like. These are the fragrances from you, you know, that I enjoy. And this is kind of like what I'm hopefully looking for. You're looking for something aromatic, something feminine, something more floral dominant. Uh, you can definitely reach out and let let him know kind of what you're looking for. But that doesn't mean that the notes will let you do it. You know, you can have all the ingredients to make uh, spaghetti bolognese and you can't take those ingredients, you know, and make a funfetti cake. There's only a certain amount you can do with your ingredients. So um, do keep that in mind if you do go through with this service. However, Everything I've tried from the samples to the bottles that I own, which aren't too many, I do need to invest in more bottles. I have been incredibly pleased and impressed with this house. And that's why I have no problem um, doing this bespoke service. And I have spent my own money. He has never reached out to me. He's never offered me this service in exchange for a review. And to be perfectly honest, I have no problem that he hasn't. I have no problem paying for this because this is a very special service and this is something that I love indulging in. It's something that I like to treat myself to and I figured for my thousandth bottle it would be a lovely little commemorative um, treat to myself and to my collection. So 
that is my Minois and Fleur first impressions review kind of discussion. It did come in its own little box. So I have this too. And yeah, that is my discussion. I hope you guys like this video. If you guys have any questions on the service, please let me know. Like I said, I've done this twice. So I do have a little bit of knowledge on how to navigate it if you have any questions. And I'd love to know if you guys have done this yourself or if you've done any other types of bespoke services. I'd love to know other ones. I do look for bespoke services to do because you guys have asked for it and I don't mind investing my own money in doing that and kind of sharing my experience so you guys don't have to. So if there's any other bespoke services you guys have kind of been interested in, also let me know below. I'd be more than happy to look into that for my channel to share my thoughts and reviews with you guys. But if you want a really fantastic bespoke service, this, in my opinion, for like getting a bottle of perfume is one of the best. It's something beautiful and um, elevated and luxurious and gorgeous. And I've just been completely, I'm just blown away by all the fragrances I've tried. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.